Welcome back everyone to another installment on our series on making a platform game in Unity. This is Mike Page with ScriptingIsFun.com. In this video we're going to be adding in checkpoints. So when our player uh, is killed we want to be able to maybe send him back to a checkpoint so he doesn't have to go all the way back to the beginning of the level. So that's going to be our goal and our job in this video. So to get started the first thing we need to do is set some checkpoints up. We want a checkpoint that's going to be our start position for the level and then we'll set up a checkpoint that they can walk through uh, to save a position to go back to. So we are going to go into our hierarchy just right click here and we're going to create an empty game object and we're going to call this start point and uh, let's go here to our inspector and if we click this little color block up here we can pick an icon uh, to put on this so let's just pick maybe like a blue uh, that way we can see where this empty game object is in the world uh, we can also get our move tool here so we can move it around. So let's pick a start point back over in here somewhere for our player to start at. And there we go. We just want to make sure it's zero on the Z here. And then we'll have this right where we want the player to go to. Uh, then what we're going to want to do is have a checkpoint. So let's look for a good place for a checkpoint to go. So maybe the checkpoint would be after we get past these two aliens here we put a checkpoint right up here if we're going to save our progress so again I'm just going to make an empty game object and let's give it one of these tags here so maybe we'll do green here for a checkpoint and let's just call this checkpoint So for the checkpoint to work, we have to be able to detect when the player touches it. So the checkpoint is going to need a collider. So let's add a 2D, let's just go ahead and put a box collider on here. And we'll go ahead and edit that collider down a little bit. Um, we want to make sure we center it on our checkpoint graphic here. Maybe we'll just move it down a bit so that it's going to cover where the player walks through and we want to go ahead and mark this as a trigger. We're also going to want to tag this checkpoint so that we can tell what it was that the player walked through. So let's create a new tag by clicking up in the tag area where it says untagged. Let's go to add tag. We'll hit our plus button here and we'll call this checkpoint. And we'll save that. And then we got to go back to our checkpoint here and make sure we select that tag as checkpoint. Okay, I think that's the setup we needed out here. We'll have to go into our player script here now to add some script. So in the player script here, we're going to need to have a couple of variables. This is going to keep working down here towards the bottom. So we're going to need a variable. We'll call it a public transform because we want to uh, store a position and a rotation. So public transform and we'll call this current checkpoint. This is going to store the checkpoint that we want the player to go back to uh, when the game uh, needs to reset when he dies. All right, so we'll have a current checkpoint. Next, we're going to go make ourselves a new function down here at the bottom. Uh, we have an on collision enter 2D function which goes uh, off and does its code whenever we collide with another collider that is not a trigger. This time we actually want a function that will work for trigger colliders. So we're going to say void on trigger enter 2D. And I'm going to take the private off of there for now. Okay, so void on trigger enter 2D. This needs a collider to the variable and I like to usually call this other because that makes a little more sense to me but you can leave the default in there if you want to. Alright so we have this function. This function will run so let's go ahead and put a note on this. This function will run whenever the player collides with a trigger collider. All right, so uh, in this case, we want to test to see if the trigger collider we just touched has the tag of checkpoint. 
So we'll start with an if statement. If other, that's the other object that the player just ran into, we'll do a compare tag. And if we compare that tag to checkpoint, then we know that we've just walked into a trigger collider that's a checkpoint. If that's the case, then we're going to make our current checkpoint equal to this object's position. So we need to get the object's position, this other object. So we say other dot transform. Okay, so actually we're just going to store its transform because current checkpoint is a transform variable. So we'll store the transform of the checkpoint, which will have the position in it. So this will store our checkpoint. And we can go make sure that this is actually working correctly. So let's go out into Unity here. Okay, we'll go to our player. And when the game starts, let's just give the current checkpoint to be the start point here. So I'm just going to drag start point right here into current checkpoint. That way, if something happens to him before he reaches that checkpoint, we can make him go back to the start. So that would be how we would set this up on that end. And then let's just kind of move our player up here a little closer to our checkpoint. Uh, so that we don't have to waste time dodging through all these enemies here. So I'm just going to grab the player and I'm going to move him up here next to the checkpoint so that we can watch him walk through it. Okay, let's hit play and let's see what happens here. So what we're watching for is to see if current checkpoint changes from start point to checkpoint here. So let's walk into the collider for it. And did you notice that when I walked into the collider here for checkpoint, now down in the inspector, it says checkpoint there instead of start point. So that is working. When we walk through it, it's going to set this as our current checkpoint. Okay, that's a good start. Next thing we have to do is put some code in here for where we run out of lives now, instead of just making our player disappear, uh, and nothing else happened, we want to actually move him to his last checkpoint or whatever he thinks his current checkpoint is. So let's jump back into our player script here. Let's see if where we're checking for death and that's right here. Right now we are uh, checking for death if we get run into by an enemy, a physical collision. And right now all we're doing is we're setting our game object active faults so that he disappears. Uh, we're probably not going to want to do that now because we've got some other code here in his script that we're going to be running. So we don't want to turn his whole entire game object off anymore because if we do that we turn this player script off as well. So what we want to do is just turn his renderer off and then we want to move him and then turn him back on. If we scroll up to the top where our variables are, you'll see we already have a variable here for the sprite renderer of our object. So we are already, uh, and we're loading it right here at the beginning of the game. So we already have a link to our sprite renderer. So what we can do is we can just disable our sprite renderer and that will make us turn invisible. The sprite renderer is the component that actually draws our sprite on the screen. So we're going to change this right here to a different command. We're going to say sprite renderer dot enabled equals false. This will disable the sprite renderer and make our player turn invisible. Once we do that, then we can go ahead and move our player back to his checkpoint, to his current checkpoint. So what we'll say is transform dot position equals and then we'll go to our current checkpoint dot position. So we're just going to teleport our player from wherever he is to the current checkpoint's position. So in the beginning of the game, that's going to be a start point. At the uh, later in the game, when he walks through a checkpoint, that would be whichever the last checkpoint is that he walked through. So let's make a save here. Um, and then let's add one more thing. So after we move him, we're going to want to turn him back on. 
So actually, let's not turn him off for now. Maybe we'll add that a little later. Let's just comment that line out for now. Kind of changed my mind there. Uh, we're, we'll just teleport him directly back to his last checkpoint for now. And then we can get a little fancier with it here later. So let's save that and go back out to Unity. Okay, let's move our player back to his start point here. So let's just grab him and drag him down here to where the game starts. And this time, let's see if we can run out of lives uh, and see if he goes back to his start point, because start point is his current checkpoint. So let's test it out from there. Okay, so let's go up here and let's let this enemy here hit us a few times. Just going to run in and out. There we go. And you notice that as soon as I ran out of life, I immediately teleported back here to my start point. All right, so if it works for the start point, we know it moves us to the current checkpoint. So it'll also work for that other checkpoint that we put up in the scene. So we now we have a checkpoint system in place here. Uh, so now we can maybe go back and get a little more fancy. Uh, maybe we want to add some sort of a death animation at some point. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, but uh, maybe we want to have some sort of a delay. And so instead of just a jump uh, right back to the start, uh, we want to focus back in on the start position and then maybe have our player spawn back in after a delay. So why don't we just add that, add a little more... Uh, fanciness here. So we'll go ahead now and uh, disable his sprite renderer. So I think what we're going to do here is instead of jumping the camera right away when we die, we want to see our, our player disappear. We want to hold there for just a second so we get a feel for, oh man, I hit that enemy or whatever it is. I guess I died. Then we want to go ahead and move our guy, our player, back to his current checkpoint and turn him back on. So we'll go ahead and turn off a sprite renderer right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call a function in the future that will turn him back on and move him. So to do that, you can use something called an invoke command. The invoke command allows you to invoke a method in a number of seconds. So we're gonna need a method or a function. We give its name as a string. We'll have to make this function in a second. We'll call this respawn. So we're gonna respawn at a checkpoint here. We put a comma, now we can put a float number of seconds that we want it to wait. So let's have it wait one second before it invokes this function. And then let's make that function. Let's just put it right up here. So this is gonna be a void. We're gonna call it respawn. And then we're going to need to move this because we don't want to move his position next. When we move him, the camera jumps. So let's just cut that and move this up here into respawn so we won't move him until after he's been um, killed here. And then we also, after we move him, we're going to want to turn back on his sprite renderer. So we'll just say sprite renderer enabled equals true and that will make him come back visible so when he runs out of health we'll turn his sprite renderer off we'll then invoke respawn in one second so he's going to sit right there for a second and then he's going to pop up over here uh, at the current checkpoints position and be turned back visible so let's test it out see if it's doing what we want it to do just to make this faster, let's actually turn his health down to five so that it only takes one hit for him to be killed. And then we can run up here on this red enemy here, this red alien, and we can run into him and there. See how we turned invisible there for a second? And then we bounced right back over here to our start point. We can do it again. And I want to show you something here. So. There's a bit of a problem here because I can actually control him and move him around when he is uh, invisible. So we do want to fix that because uh, we don't want the player to inadvertently be moving around and jumping around when they're invisible because that's going to look a little bit strange and it could cause some unforeseen difficulties in our game. So let's fix that by putting in just a, a an ability to disable the player's controls. So the player's controls 
are all happening up here in our update function, right? Here's where we're doing all our inputs and our key presses and all the animation things we're turning on and off. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in at the very top here of our update function, we're going to put in a way to disable the controls. So to, to put in this uh, disabling uh, piece of, of code here in the update, we first need a Boolean variable. So let's go up here and make another new variable. So we'll just make this a public bool and we'll call it disabled. Okay, and when the game starts, let's go ahead and just set that to false. So when the game starts, he's not disabled, so he can do his thing. Then in the update function here, we can do a check. We can say if disabled, so if it's true, then we want to have the update function stop right here and not do anything else. We can use the command return. And what return will do is it'll see this line and it'll stop this function and it'll just go to the next frame basically or whatever else it has to do. So none of this stuff below it will get called, which means that we won't have any controls. So if we turn the value of this Boolean variable to true, we won't have control of our player. It disables all his controls. And if it's if we make this uh, false, where he's not disabled, like he is at the beginning, then he'll be able to move around and do everything that we want him to do. So now down here in our collision enter 2D function, where we're checking for death, we're going to turn his renderer off. And then we're also going to set disabled to true. So now his controls will be disabled. He'll be disabled until we invoke the respawn function, at which point we will turn his renderer back on and then also put disabled to false so that he'll have control back. So now that should fix that issue we had with him being able to be controlled when he's between spawns. So let's go back into Unity and let's make sure it's all functioning correctly. Okay, let's go up here and we're going to jump on this enemy and we're going to uh, see if we can control ourselves. So jump up, hit him. Okay, I have no control until I jump back over here. So maybe one second's a little too, uh, too short of a time. We can also go in and adjust that. But let's try it again here. I'm going to keep trying to run. Nope, see I can't move or do anything until I respawn, at which point I started running again. So that makes our checkpoint system work and we're making the player look like he goes away. Again, we could play a death animation there as well if we wanted to. Uh, and then once the animation was done, we could just hold on it for a second and then we can move him back over and spawn him back in. We could spawn him back in and put another delay in for uh, enabling the controls so that the player uh, has time to see what's happening. It really just depends on what kind of little touches and feels you want to put into your game. But this would be the basics of a good start for a checkpoint system uh, where we uh, can put checkpoints in our game uh, either right before a really difficult section of the game where the player may tend to die or right after they make it through a real difficult section so that they don't have to go back through it again. Alright, so that's going to be it for this installment of our tutorial series today. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments for me below and I'll get to those as soon as I can. Hope you have a great day and that you're enjoying the project.